All right, you have a hole in the sinus you need to take care of? Yes, yes. You have to carefully reapproximate the edges of the patch craft? I'll just feel it with a clip. No, John, that could occlude the sinus. There. See? Oh. Bleeding stopped. Oh, BP's 210 over 130. Venus infraction, the trichelostomy tube now. She's coding. Hey guys, it's Dr. Dan here. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys who are new to my channel, I'm a practicing orthopedic spine surgeon. And here on YouTube, I love teaching medical concepts and also inspiring all of you future doctors out there by reviewing medical dramas. The crowd favorite right now is Grey's Anatomy. And today's video is part two of the aftermath of the very intense plane crash episode in Grey's Anatomy coming to you right after this. Before we get started, I just wanted to thank all of you guys for being here and just ask a small favor, which is down below, please just smash that like button and let the YouTube algorithm know how much you love these doctor reaction videos. And also if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notifications so you don't miss another future doctor reaction video. Let's get started. Meningioma, patient is female, 44 years old. It's got a tricky spot. It's right up against the sagittal sinus. Which is why I suggested Dr. Ramsey see what you might do. So a meningioma is a tumor that arises from the membranes that cover the spinal cord and the brain. And this membrane is the meninges. Meningiomas are the most common brain tumor. And thankfully, most of them are benign. And they're not actually arising from brain tissue itself, but they do take up space in the skull and can push on the brain causing symptoms. They also mentioned the sagittal sinus, which is one part of the venous sinuses of the brain, which are venous channels in the brain. They actually drain all the blood away from the brain and it actually dumps into the internal jugular vein, which goes back to the heart. They mention here that the tumor is close to the sagittal sinus, which is not good. Veins that are blocking your way to the tumor are not good because they can bleed and potentially obstruct your way to the tumor. I'd cut it out. Right, but with two draining veins in the way, it might be safer to see how she responds. You need to dissect the two draining veins clear and approach it from this direction. You get it all, she's cured. So here they're debating the use of radio surgery. Radio surgery is surgery using radiation, which is blasts of energy that are used to precisely shrink a tumor, kill some of the cells that are cancerous. They're debating that versus complete surgical resection of the tumor, and both have their pros and cons. Radio surgery doesn't require an incision, it's less morbid and less painful for the patient, but you may not be able to get a complete resection of the tumor. When you go in there surgically, you see the entire tumor, you can take it out, you can also take margins or little biopsies of the tissue that surrounds the tumor and send it off to pathology where they look under a slide to make sure that all of that tissue is cancer free to confirm that the resection is very thorough. Sure, it's completely free. This is pretty cool. Dr. Ramsey's got a meningioma invading the sagittal sinus. There's bleeding from the sinus. Induction. Cotinoids. Okay, let's put the head on the table up. No, 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 get the head down. BP is 90 over 50. CO2 is down to 22. All right, get the head down. Move it down. She's sucking in air. You have an air embolus. So Dr. Shepard here mentions that there is an air embolus, which is a very dangerous condition, and air bubbles are actually blocking blood vessels. And how this happens in surgery is if there's an exposed vein, the air in the surgical field can enter that vein and travel to the heart and lungs, causing a very dangerous blockage. He mentions that she should put the head of the bed down, which is this position called Trendelenburg, and it's a maneuver here that he's attempting to use to try to free that blockage in the heart. All right, you have a hole in the sinus you need to take care of? Yes, yes. You have to carefully reapproximate the edges of the patch craft? I'll just feel it with a clip. No, John, that could occlude the sinus. There. See? Oh. Bleeding stopped. Oh, BP's 210 over 130. Venus infraction, the trichelostomy tube now. She's coding. See? Bleeding stopped. You know, I don't think that's very realistic. A surgeon's not gonna do a venous repair and all of a sudden just feel so confident about it, they're gonna be watching their repair very carefully to make sure that the repair actually holds. And what she wanted to use here is a surgical clip, and the device that she was holding her hand looks like this. And there is a time and place to use surgical clips in surgery. Here he's arguing for a more delicate repair of these tissues because the venous sinuses are veins that are very friable and can tear very easily, especially with clips. And so you can use micro sutures and do a more gentle repair that may be more successful. Unfortunately here, 
looks like the bleeding was exacerbated by the clips. So I had a look at uh, Schachter's plan. He's opted for N10 repair. What'd you think? It's good. It's just that I've, I've been in there. I've seen the amount of gap in the nerve, and I know it's messier, but I thought a nerve graft might be better. You could use your own AIN for the graft. I've used it before. It's practically gift wrapped for median nerve graft. So Derek appears to have injured his nerve in his hand during the plane crash. What they're talking about here is his nerve repair surgery, and she mentions this end-to-end -end repair. When you take a nerve that has been transected and you take the two ends, put them together, and you suture them together using microsurgery. Now, if a nerve has been cut and has been left there for several weeks, which is probably what happened here, the two ends can be retracted. And so when you try to suture them together, they may not come together the way you want them to. And so this is why she's proposing a nerve graft. Nerve graft is where you actually harvest a piece of nerve from another site called the donor site. Numbness in that area where you sacrifice the nerve and you use that as part of the repair. Then the nerve doesn't have to be under so much tension. And here she suggests the AIN, which is the anterior interosseous nerve, which actually comes off of the median nerve here in the forearm. And I actually looked this up and the AIN can be used as a donor graft as Dr. Torres is suggesting here. Which is why you should. What? I want you to do the surgery. No. No, oh, man. No. <laughs> Perfect. This looks perfect. <laughs> Does Dr. Torres look stressed? She looks stressed and understandably so. She has, it appears, Dr. Shepard's future in her hands. And sadly, a lot of this is not under her control. She'll do a perfect operation. And if the nerve was not meant to grow back, it won't grow back. <laughs> combination of extreme exhaustion, dehydration, and exposure seems to have put her in a state. What do you mean? We think it's reactive psychosis. So reactive psychosis is actually a condition, and it's actually called brief psychotic disorder. And the patient, what they experience is delusions or hallucinations from anywhere from a day to a month. They'll usually break out of it, and it's usually initiated by some very stressful event, which Christina has experienced here during the plane crash. Hopefully she breaks out soon. The way that they talk about her around here, it's like she's a legend, you know? Mm. And now she's like an end table. <laughs> Shane, that's horrible. Stop Sorry. It. So that's totally unacceptable. You should never be speaking about patients in such a derogatory way, whether you're in public or in private like this. I remember getting the bugs out of Arizona's leg. I put leaves on it, trying to keep them out. So this is pretty rough describing her experience. It looks like she's coming out of her psychotic episode and she's telling Owen what she experienced. So just to recap from the plane crash episode, Arizona suffered a open femur fracture and that's where her thigh bone actually broke and popped out of the skin and that bone is now exposed to air and is a high risk for infection. And it appears that bugs were in that wound and Christina was trying to take them out, but that is not a good situation. I hope Arizona's leg is okay. Mark just kept dying. It was so annoying. I kept trying to help him, but he just kept trying to die on me. So just to recap again, Mark suffered a cardiac tamponade, which is a fluid collection around the heart that was preventing his heart from functioning properly. They actually performed a pericardiocentesis to try to drain that fluid collection, and he just didn't look like he was going to do well. Christina says that he kept dying, so I don't know what that means exactly, and whether she was reviving him. It's hard because they didn't have a defibrillator or any good medical equipment out there, so if he was coding, I don't know really how she was bringing him back. Arizona got the last of the water, and I remember drinking something. Bad. And that might have been the fuel from the plane. Yeah. I drank my pee. Oh, jeez. So everyone asks this question, is it okay to drink your own pee? I looked into this and there's some controversy about it, but the overall consensus is it's not okay. Now the reason is that your kidneys, which produce urine, what they're doing is they're filtering out waste products like ammonia into your urine. The waste products that your body is trying to excrete, you're putting them back in. Urine has a very high salt content, almost as high as seawater, and that would actually dehydrate you 
further if you drank it. So even the US Army's survival guide actually says not to drink your own pee. I kept waiting for them to come and kill me, but they didn't. And then I realized they were fighting over Lexi. I tried to keep them off of her, I tried. Guys, that is really sad. You know, you can see why Christina is traumatized. She had a terrible experience out there. And, you know, I got to give it to all of you hardcore Grey's Anatomy's fan. And I mentioned this in my last Doctor Reaction videos. I get to jump around. I'm not really attached to these characters. Some of you guys are so dedicated to the show and so attached to the characters. You know, I can imagine that you're very sad, you know, watching the writers of this show just kill off the characters in such brutal ways. So sorry you have to experience that. So I'm going to end part two of this plane crash aftermath reaction video right here. There is a lot of good medicine that we covered here. And I want to be thorough with all the parts. There's still so much we need to figure out. What happens to Arizona? How does Derek's surgery go? Hope it all goes well. We'll cover that in the next video. And also, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notifications so you don't miss another future Doctor Reaction video. Thank you guys all so much for watching. If you learned something, please, please, please smash that like button below. I'm going to put the playlist of all my other Doctor Reacts videos right here so you can watch them all. And I'll see you on the next video.